Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will compensate businesses if it decides not to proceed with the deposit return scheme. Minister Lorna Slater. We are committed to our deposit return scheme, which is critical to reducing litter, tackling emissions and increasing recycling. I am grateful to all the businesses for the investment they have made in preparing for DRS. The missing piece of the jigsaw is for the UK Government to agree an exclusion from the Internal Market Act. Yep. We have been discussing an exclusion with the UK Government for almost two years, fully following the agreed process. The UK Government needs to now do the right thing and agree an exclusion now to give businesses the certainty they need in order to prepare for the launch in March and allow investment made by businesses to be put to good use. Megan Gallagher. Yesterday, during the Scottish Affairs Committee, the Secretary of State for Scotland announced that the UK Government were still missing elements of the application for an exemption to UK trade rules. The faults with this disastrous scheme lie firmly at the door of the Minister's office. The shambolic rollout of this policy has damaged the relationship and confidence amongst Scottish businesses. And let's remind the Chamber that the thousands of businesses that have not even signed up to the SNP Green Deposit Return Scheme because it will think it will be too damaging for their business. The Scottish Retail Consortium has even said that one of Lorna Slater's recently proposed changes to the scheme makes it even less likely that the deposit return scheme will go ahead in March 2024. And the Scottish Licensed Trade Association said explicitly that Lorna Slater has effectively torpedoed the scheme. So let me ask the Minister, why does she think Scottish businesses are wrong? Minister. I'm going to address the point that the member raised early in her question. Simply, it is not true that the information required under, under the common framework has been, not been shared. Provision of the impact assessments of the kind Mr Jack has demanded is actually not part of the common framework of process. But it is not true that these have not been carried out. We have conducted a full set of impact assessments at the appropriate point in delivery of the scheme. These are publicly available. The Business Regulatory Impact Assessment, known as ABRIA, Equality Impact Assessment, the Islands Impact Assessment, the Strategic Environmental Assessment. Within the BRIA, we have covered all the impact assessments that Alistair Jack has claimed have not been conducted. And I direct you uh, and him, uh, the member and him. Through the chair, please. Sorry, direct, direct the member and uh, Mr. Jack to the following pages. The competition assessment begins on page 35 of the BRIA, and the impact on consumer choice begins on page 58. We have supplied all the required information and more to agree an exclusion from the Internal Market Act. Furthermore, the Secretary of State for Leveling Up, Housing and Communities, that's Michael Gove, wrote to the DFM today, thanking us for our updated analysis of the impact of the Scottish Deposit Return Scheme and confirms that his government is currently processing and reviewing that information. In that letter, Mr Gove has not Briefly, indicated please. that there is any further or outstanding information that the UK government require to enable them to make a decision on the Internal Market Act exclusion. So to answer the member's question, the reason I can give Scottish business confidence is because there is no reason for an Internal Market Act exclusion not to be granted. Yep. We have provided all the information and Mr Gove and his colleagues are now considering that. Yeah. Megan Gallagher. Once again, the Minister is abdicating responsibility in trying to pin the blame on the UK Government. The deposit, the deposit return scheme is a long-standing Scottish Government project which they have been responsible for and have talked about for years. It's not anybody else's problem and everyone else but Lorna Slater agrees. It is time for the Minister to put her money where her mouth is if, and that's if, the Minister who is responsible for paying compensation to Scottish businesses is so confident about the scheme and about her commitments that she's made today, will she commit to publishing the Scottish Government's legal advice on who is liable to pay? Minister. To answer the member, as I've answered previously, I am committed to delivering Scotland's deposit return scheme on March 1st, and we are working toward all the pieces of that, working closely with industry. The one piece we need left is that Internal Market Act exclusion. And as we have seen in that letter from Mr Gove today, we have provided all the information necessary for that to be, to that to be granted, and that's currently being considered by the UK Government. Thank you. And I call Claire Adamson. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. The DRS is a democratic decision made by this Parliament. The Tory Government at Westminster has torn up the common frameworks intended to protect devolution and regulatory divergence. The common frameworks were developed in conjunction with the devolved legislatures of the UK and they permit regulatory divergence, including they have a dispute resolution uh, section which 
to the best of my knowledge, has not been initiated in this, in this uh, DRS area. Does the Minister agree that the anti-democratic posturing is putting the DRS scheme, regulatory divergence and, and the future of, of, of devolution at risk, all for a, an internal market act that I remind as well that this parliament rejected and was ignored by Westminster. Minister. I absolutely agree with the member. There is a climate crisis now that requires urgent action and the deposit return scheme is a practical way to tackle this. Our deposit return scheme will help us achieve our net zero ambitions as well as tackling litter and increasing recycling. All aims which I know the UK government shares. And there is strong public support for Scotland's deposit return scheme, with polling carried out in February showing that 70% of Scots support deposit return. So it is astonishing that the Secretary for State for Scotland is actively working to undermine these aims and the way devolution works. The UK government, in the shape of DEFRA, can choose to ignore that conduct and grant the exemption now, which is in the interest of both Scotland and the wider UK. Sarah Boyack. It is unacceptable that we are now facing massive uncertainty for our businesses because of the Scottish Government. We urgently need a ministerial statement on this matter because our constituents, businesses and producers members, members, need Ms. more Boyack. than the answers we will get now. The Ms. Boyack, can I ask you to sit down for a moment, please? Sure. I cannot hear you because members are shouting. You cannot listen when you are shouting, and I am sure we would all agree that each and every member should be heard. Sarah Boyack. I appreciate that, presiding officer. The issue of compensation has arisen due to the predictable game, blame game taking place on an internal market exemption. So can the Minister confirm what steps she and her officials have taken to look at all options? And can the Minister confirm whether she and her officials have exhausted every possible solution that would avoid the need for an Internal Market Act exemption and to launch a successful and workable deposit return scheme? Yes or no? Minister. Uh yeah, thank the member very much for the question. Of course, we do know that we need an Internal Market Act exclusion to launch the scheme. We've known it all along. That's why we have engaged with the UK government in good faith on that exclusion for, uh, for nearly two years now. We first raised the need for an exclusion in July 2021, and we have followed the process that was agreed between the UK and the devolved governments, and we have published a summary of the correspondence and engagement with the UK government, which they do not dispute. We submitted a final detailed paper on the exclusions proposal to the Resources and Waste Common Framework on the 13th of February this year. This was the culmination of the continued engagement at official and ministerial levels, excluding DRS from the effects from the IMA. We cannot go on indefinitely. We do need an answer for this. But as we've seen in the letter from Mr Gove today, the UK government now has all the information they need and are actively considering it. So once the... We have a, you know, once they've made a decision on that, they know that that decision needs to be by the end of this month. We will proceed with delivering the uh, deposit return scheme. Willie Rennie. I mean, the, the Minister has got to acknowledge that this scheme has been in trouble for quite a long time, well, below, well before this recent episode. And confidence in those who are expected to deliver this scheme is rock bottom. So rather than stringing this out for yet more weeks and months, why doesn't the Minister just acknowledge that she needs to go back to the drawing board, come up with a new scheme, work with the UK government to develop something that works, rather than stringing it out. Minister. I'm, I'm rather shocked by the member who's suggesting that, because the regulations for deposit return scheme were passed by this parliament yep. in 2020. Yes. They were extensively consulted upon. They went through the committee process and all the stages yep. of the Scottish parliament. The deposit return scheme that is being delivered is in line with that work that was done at that time. Yep. It is absolutely the intention, my intention to continue to deliver what this Parliament voted for, and that is what we are actively engaged with industry on. I do not agree with the member's characterization. I met with industry stakeholders yesterday in terms of the high-level uh, ministerial strategic group for the delivery of this. We are now looking at working through the operational details sector by sector with industry uh, so, that we can have that, uh, so that we can have that delivery in March. I am supporting the facilitation of the intersectoral group so that 
if there are issues that cannot be sorted out sector by sector, by hospitality, by retail, by producer, they can be escalated to myself and resolved in the quickest and shortest possible time. I have every confidence that industry will be able to deliver this scheme, and that's what we are working on. I do not recognize the member's characterization of this at all. Uh, industry have invested hundreds of millions of pounds toward this scheme. They have recruited people. There are IT systems underway. Reverse spending machines are being installed. Sorting centers are being set up. The vehicles and logistics are being set up. We are all systems go. We just need that last little piece of the internal market. Act Briefly, exemption. Minister. And we will carry on with the launch. Yeah, yeah. Brian Whittle. Yeah. Thank you, President Officer. I can remind the, the, uh, the Minister that was, we had 100 per cent support of MSPs in this chamber for a DRS scheme. Just not this shambles. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and what, what's more than, more than that is business have said the same. Can I just say that um, uh, uh, I asked the Minister why 10 months before this date she's putting, uh, dropping, uh, threatening to drop the scheme 10 months before. Why, why not 10 months before the last day or 10 months before the date before that or 10 months before the date before that? Because the reality is you only put an official um, um, request in for the, in, in the, the, church, the exclusion of the external act for the 6th of March 2023. It's, the public don't understand it. Business don't understand it. The minister doesn't understand it. Isn't it time to go back to the drawing board? Minister. Uh, the member is absolutely incorrect on that point. Yep. Yep. Alistair Jack... The process that Alistair Jack has described there for uh, asking for a formal request is not how the process for decisions yeah. between the governments work. Yeah. They are based on the common framework, which is an agreed yeah. and published process. Yeah. Alistair Jack cannot just make up bits of the process yeah. Yeah. for the purpose of saying yeah. that I didn't comply with them. Yeah. We have engaged with the UK government in good faith on the exclusion at every step. And we have Members. published the correspondence and engagement that we have had with the UK government. We first raised the need for the exclusion in July 2021. This has been going on for nearly two years. The UK government must not delay any further, must give us the confidence that we need to go forward. Yep. But as I said, in the letter from Michael Gove today, he has received all the information that he needs, and that decision is currently being considered by the UK government. I really welcome that, and I look forward to a positive decision on this exclusion in the near future. Yeah, yeah. Fergus Ewing. Thank you, President Officer. The last gateway review was completed in March two months ago. Why hasn't it been made public, and when will it be made public? Um, irrespective of who is responsible for compensation, can the Minister simply confirm that businesses, producers and retailers have incurred costs as required by law, and therefore, if the scheme fails, they must get compensation. Does the Minister accept that that principle is simply unchallengeable? Minister. I believe there were two questions there. Um, on the second point, the question of compensation is a thoroughly hypothetical one at this point. I am working towards getting this scheme launched and making sure that the scheme is a success. And that is what we are putting in place towards the March 1st launch. The second question that I think was embedded there was about the uh, gateway review. The member is correct. The most recent gateway review took place in March. Uh, and the Scottish Government is fully, uh, carefully considering the recommendations of this review and we will be sharing these and the response to that review with the Net Zero Energy and Transport Committee later on. Uh, Mark Cross, imminently. Sorry. The Secretary of State for Scotland is actively seeking to sabotage not only DRS with all its benefits for litter reduction, recycling and climate emissions, but the whole basis of devolution, the right of this Parliament and the Welsh Senate to deliver DRS schemes across Members. the UK which include glass. So can I ask the Minister, can she say how she has sought to correct Mr Jack's misrepresentations and misunderstandings of the way that devolution works across these islands? Minister. Uh, th uh, thank the member very much for that question. Uh, indeed, I met uh, with Mr. Jack yesterday at our regular uh, intergovernmental meeting where I laid out to him exactly what we have been done in terms of following the process and indeed how we've gone above and beyond the agreed process by providing all the additional information that he and his colleagues have asked for. I can certainly remind the member who will, of course, know that the Scottish Parliament approved the Deposit and Return Scheme for Scotland regulations in 2020, long before the introduction of the Internal Market Act. Yeah. Reg our reg these regulations are wholly within devolved competence and, of course, as the member alluded to, did include glass in the scheme as well. Liam Kerr. 
very grateful. The Scottish Government has spent nearly £220,000 so far on setting up the DRS. How much was budgeted for? Minister. Uh, thank the member for the question. I, I don't have that information to hand, but I'm happy to write to the member. The operational costs of running the scheme will be met by industry, of course, and already hundreds of millions of pounds of private investment have been made toward that. Uh, in recent days, we have temporarily increased the number of Scottish Government staff working on policy development and stakeholder engagement, uh, which of course is to support the changes to the regulations, which I'll be bringing to the Parliament shortly, ensure that industry is prepared for the scheme. And of course, we've had to handle an increase of freedom of information requests and increased correspondence with industry. Of I aim to respond to members, businesses and constituents in a timely fashion. So I believe this is the response is what you'd be expected by Parliament, industry and the general public. Stephen Kerr. The Minister is in denial. She is acting with recklessness. Uh, the, 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 question, the question that was asked there by Fergus Ewing stands unanswered, and that is very simply this. The, the Minister has apparently publicly admitted to businesses that by the end of this month, the DRS might be scrapped. So how much does she estimate is due to businesses in compensation should that arise? And if she says it's hypothetical, it's duty bound on her as a minister to, to, to take all of the considerations in mind regarding any decision. So what is the amount that she has in mind that would be due to businesses in compensation? It's a very simple question. We don't need a pre-written script answer. Just tell us what it is. Minister. It doesn't matter how many times the member asks the question, the answer is still the same. It is a hypothetical question because the deposit return scheme is continuing ahead. All the information required for uh, the granting of an exclusion to the Internal Market Act has been submitted to the UK Government, in fact, weeks ago. Indeed, we have submitted additional information. They have everything they need. There is no reason for an exclusion not to be granted. And I look forward to hearing about that in the next few days and carrying on with the delivery of the deposit return scheme. Yeah.